Today is October 29th, 2017. By the time you hear this podcast, things may have changed. Welcome to Black Women Talk Politics. I'm Sabria Williams. I'm Sheila Clark. And we've had another week. Well, first, we should shout out, because we're all turned. <laughs> we had a great weekend. Um, it was great to see people. Great to see um, our Turp family, our University of Maryland folks. Um, so we're going to shout them out. And now we can get back to the business of the news and what happened this week. Um, yeah. Because we had a little respite with our homecoming. Yeah, right? it, was. it was. A little, it was light, a little levity in the week. Matter of fact, some of our fellow turfs, like last week, we had Terry here mm-hmm. on the show and um, others from Maryland that have contributed greatly to the success of this podcast. So thank you, folks, and keep sharing, keep listening, keep liking Black yep. Women Talk Politics. Well, you know, one of the things that um, happened this week that was interesting is so, you know, we've all been hearing about the opioid crisis um, in our country. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's just been... Um, more and more and more spotlight on the, you know, terrible effects that this drug has had um, coming, a lot of people starting off with prescription Mm painkillers and then moving on to heroin. And on uh, this week, President Trump on Thursday directed the Department of Health and Human Services to declare an opioid crisis um, as a public health emergency. And so this was uh, long anticipated because everybody is understanding how this uh, drug and its use and, and its abuse and is taking a toll on communities across the country. So for people who are in this work, um, folks said that this was a very good step, but it was also a very small first step. And the reason predominantly was because there was very little uh, additional resources that are being directed towards the problem. And so that's one of the things that I think is really important to note that it's, you know, it's nice from a public relations standpoint to call it a public health emergency. But at the end of the day, um, what you really need is for a declaration of national emergency, which could then promote a rapid reallocation of federal funding. So but wasn't know, the 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 rationale behind not doing the nationals that you they actually do it for like her for like. The hurricanes that hit Puerto Rico or the Virgin Islands, that's when they implement that. So that was the rationale. So, And I'm only asking so I can get, because I'm trying to get an understanding of the difference, the difference between, like, why wouldn't you, and I mean, well, what, it can, is what a constitutes? Res- it is a resource issue for what I mm-hmm. understand. Like, you know, one of the things that people were saying was that, you know, because that it's really Congress's job right. to allocate the resources and kind of pushing it back to Congress, which we know they have a hard time doing anything between all of the recesses and vacations that they take. Um, So, you know, what we have here is a drug crisis that's claimed almost 60,000 lives Mm -hmm. in 2016. 161 people per day. I mean, it's it's, ridiculous. it's, It's ridiculous. And I think, you know, so here's some interesting things, you know, when you're just looking at this. West, so there's a there's a documentary on Netflix that's out now called Heroin. Mm-hmm. Right, and it's like heroin with an E in parentheses mm-hmm, mm-hmm, on the end, mm-hmm. so it's like a double entendre. Right, you know? right, 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 right. And so it talks about uh, West Virginia and the crisis in West Virginia, and it follows three women, a fire chief, a judge, and a street mes- missionary, as they, in their own way, battle West Virginia's opioid, o- opioid excuse me, crisis. And so, you know, this woman just talks about in her small. Um, county i think it's about sixty thousand people that live there she says every day like we get five overdose calls a day Mm. she says it's been years and years and years since i have not got a call on a daily basis for overdose she they and you know and a lot of jurisdictions including in dc you know the fire department is part of the first responders and so she talked about how the amount of time they actually spend fighting fires or is, is it sounded like she was saying less than 20 percent. i think right. she said 10 percent, but right. i'm gonna say let's say she said 20 percent. Right. so this means 80 percent of the time they're out Responding on the medical the piece mm. of the work not even dealing with fire so you know and so it's great that trump you know it's I great guess that Trump, branded it, you know, as a public 
crisis. But at the end of the day, there's resources that are needed here. And um, one of the things that he said to me that, I mean, he, he made some comments that were logical about, you know, we need to do more. But then there was this comment that, that was talking about we're going to do all this mass advertising campaign right. to let young people know not right. to do drugs. Like, <laughs> it was so foolish. It was like, this is your brain on drugs. Right. That whole thing. Right. Be like, don't you this just say no. I mean, right. that has been laughed at. It's so right. laughable. It work. Um, since Nancy Reagan does he know came that, out there. Does he know that there was, there I, was, we did that already? Yeah, I mean, I'm like, made, I was like, clearly this is a joke, right? I mean, there's, and then he talked about like his brother and, you know, he, he gave his brother a challenge not to use drugs and that was enough for him. I mean, you know, I, I have no idea, but I just, I found that to be laughable and, you know, we're always going to get a, a laugh out of Donald Trump, but Going back to real strategies, right. you know, <laughs> right? Real processes. So, another that thing that so this woman was asked, this woman in West Virginia, each and every day, this is what she does: is handle people who are in crisis, um, in overdose. And she, they asked her, "What do you think needs to happen as real as a real solution, not as a public awareness campaign, but a real solution?" And she said, "We need an unlimited supply of Narcan, right? Mm -hmm, so Narcan mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. the drug." That is now, you know, pretty much on all of the ambulances and fire trucks, mm -hmm. you know, that is that emergency rescue mm -hmm, mm -hmm. drug when someone has overdosed. And she said we need an unlimited supply. And she also talked about how now Walgreens mm. in 48 states is stocking Narcan, over 8,000 locations nationally. And, you know, this is an FDA approved form of naloxone that can reverse the effects of an opioid overdose. So it's kind of huge that you're going to be able to get this in Walgreens without a prescription. And Walgreens right. is... I mean, I don't know. Is that now not promoting, like, staying clean? I mean, so I can get this. If I have my overdose, just take my Narcan, and I'm good. I mean, well, yeah, and I get it. I feel like, yes, we should have something for to, to, to stop people from dying. But there has to be something. I mean, it just seems like it's... I don't know. Uh, I mean, you know, to be honest with you, no, I don't. I don't think it's being complicit in saying that. Yeah, it's okay to you know get high. I, I think what they're saying is there's a limited amount of time right, between do, yeah, before the it's... you know the response time may not be quick enough. Yeah, and this gives people like they talk about particularly in drug no no I want to say lies communities you know down. that you know here if I have a person in my family and I know they're a user mm -hmm, you know what mm -hmm. I mean and a lot of times the family members have rescued or been there in to, the midst of and I have this no thing deal. that I've stashed I'm not telling you that I got it right. Right, 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 right. Or like right. maybe you got it for yourself. I've got it stashed just like I have, mm -hmm. you know, band-aids right, 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 right. right. for oh God, we're you know, for the, the that first day for the for the drug addict, you know, it, that's actively using in your in your family. You know, I mean yeah. it sounds crazy, but I really no, think it's, it's, it's pretty hard, progressive yeah. of Walgreens to offer that. And basically this is what they said. By but starting Narcan in our pharmacies, we are making it easier for families and caregivers to help their loved ones by having it on hand in case it's needed. And I think that's pretty and cool. And I guess in some of these communities, it's pretty smart, too, because if everyone's dying, I mean, you have 161 people dying a day from this crisis, then you're really you're saving your some of your market, I guess. Well, I, 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 I think it's pretty cool. The other thing she talked about was medically, medically assisted detox mm -hmm. and more treatment beds. And that's Absolutely. really... No, no, yeah, so yes, the medically, yes, those, those are, those two, I, I, I'm, I guess I'm, I can immediately relate to in the Narcan I'm, I'm relating to in, as the, the compassionate side of, yes, we need to save lives, but. Well, like she said, she said, listen, treatment can work, but if you're dead, I can't help, help you get the treatment. So, like, Word. first I'm going to resuscitate you and, and make it, sure right. you breathe again. Right. And then after that, I'm going to push my, you know, let, you should really, let's not Let, keep let's doing not do this. this right. you know what I mean? Let's not do this right. Um, the other, the other thing that I guess I want to say, too, that to me is the downside of, I mean, I think this is great and clearly it's a public health crisis, but for people that are in chronic pain, I will say the downside of this whole, mm -hmm. you know, um, opioids is bad, Percocet is right, bad, right, right, you right, know, right. whatever you're taking. The, the downside is that for those people that mm -hmm. are really in chronic mm -hmm. pain, um, it, it, it is going to raise the threshold because we're talking about um, doctors are going to mm -hmm. be highly, and I think that that's great, but they're going to be highly, highly scrutinized when they mm -hmm. prescribe it, mm -hmm. which means they're going to be more reluctant. And so for those people that are living in chronic pain, you know, suffering is a miserable way to live. So yeah. I, I hope that there is some balance in the way that this, this is put out because there are a percentage of people, you know, because the conversation is always about, 
people get addicted to heroin and they started mm -hmm. off on prescription mm -hmm. painkillers mm -hmm. and they moved to heroin because it's, it's cheaper. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. But there are people who actually need to have, you know, for short periods of time, mm -hmm. access to very mm -hmm. strong painkillers. And I hope that for those people, this these new regulations don't make it impossible for them mm -hmm. to get the relief that they really do need, you know? And I, I mean, I'm happy to see that there's, there is a level of compassion that's happening, I feel like, with this awareness. Um, but it's very hard not to go back to a time when we knew that there was a drug crisis in the brown community and there was not the compassion, there was criminalization, and it yes. wasn't done in this way. And I so hope moving forward, I'm, I'm not saying that I, I, I want another, but if there is and the people don't look like the people who are on opioids, um, that we have the same level of compassion because people are people. And like you said, everyone deserves a chance to be resuscitated and be, be have a second chance at, at life. Um, and criminalizing a behavior, um, an addiction, addictive behavior is not, does not do that. Um, and so I'm happy that that's not the case with this, but we should remember that um, moving forward for, for everybody, the rules should be the same. Yeah, I mean, it's good, to, you know, it's, it's a disease and it needs to be treated as yep. a public health as, issue as, absolutely. and not as a criminal justice issue. Right. So, um, so that's kind of the big news on the opioid crisis. Right. Week. And moving to Puerto Rico, mm, the big news about Puerto Rico, besides how horribly things are going, um, uh, there is, I think there's still 70% of, of, of Puerto Rico still does not have electricity which means kids aren't able to go to school, which means, you know, I mean, that's, which means infrastructure's not, I mean, it's not, uh, it's, it's not a functioning um, territory. It's not moving. People are actually leaving in droves. I think um, since October the 3rd, more than 73,000 people have arrived in Florida um, through Miami International Airport um, or, or Orlando. Um, there, because there, there's nothing there. There's no, the, the infrastructure is now collapsed. There's, and the resources that we thought we were going to get from the federal government, or they were going to get from the federal government, are not coming in the way that, um, that, that I guess, in, in the rapidness and order that we thought it would happen. Um, so, They're actually saying that this blackout in Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands are, is the largest blackout okay, yeah. in U.S. history. And, yep. So that's, Humongous, humongous, you know. And then you have um, hired a hired company to restore the, the energy grid who who um, is two years old and before this had, I think, two full-time employees. They're at Whitefish Energy out of Montana um, with ties to Ryan Zinke, who's the interior secretary. They're, he and the CEO are supposedly friends, but that's not how he got the contract. Even though he only had two full-time employees, he was a big donator to the Trump campaign. And mayor, the mayor, uh, Cruz was calling for their dismissal all week long, or their, uh, the 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 uh, yes, the cancellation of the contract. Um, it was a three hundred million dollar contract, so it's not we're not talking small beans. Um, and now the governor uh, Ricardo Rosello has now said that the can't call for the cancellation of the three hundred million dollar Whitefish contract, which I find. Um, to be appalling that they were even able to get it. And, and it's on both sides, right? So you have Whitefish, who obviously has some ties with Interior Secretary, and it seems like there was some funkiness going on there. But also, whoever signed it on the Puerto Rican side, whoever said, okay, come on in with your two employees, and then you can sort of, you know, make it up as you go along. I mean, they're quite complicit in this as well. Well, well they said that one of the reasons they went with this company was because they were because the other company asked for twenty five million dollars up front or as some kind of deposit. I'm not justifying. I'm just saying. <laughs> to me, I'm kind of like, well, anybody with a level of common sense right. understanding that the power company in Puerto Rico just declared bankruptcy mm -hmm. in um, July for. Because and it's nine billion dollars in debt. Right. Well, only a logical uh, company is going to ask person, for a uh, company that but bid is it, they're going to ask for. So this but it doesn't even fish. matter because the federal government is guaranteeing the money. It's a federal government contract. You will get your money. I mean, there are there are ways that that, that this can happen. I mean, you had Tesla come in. And they redid solar panels on the children's hospital and restored energy for free. So. 
it, it can be done without shadiness. It can be done. I mean, and again, this is shady because while they're saying that that was a justification that the company won the twenty five million, it was, and it was shady. I wasn't saying was it wasn't it, shady. I was just saying like it's it's hilarious. Like their rationale was well, they didn't ask for any right. money up front. Right. Yes. That was the but you, like, but then how do you now then justify that there were only two people, two full time employees that were at this company? How do you not ask for money up front when the power company is nine, nine billion, billion, billion dollars in, in debt. debt? I mean, you know, that I mean, to me is just I would be like, their judgment the is a little bit is, flawed, right. just a little bit. And there, of course, the paperwork is now now that it's coming to like the paperwork isn't in order for the for the white uh, fish contract. I mean, it it's just such a I guess reflective right so it's reflective of how the whole Puerto Rican crisis has been held has been handled it's just one nightmare after the other for the and who suffers these poor people who are in Puerto Rico so whitefish in the end probably nothing a slap on the wrist they lose this contract nobody's going to jail nobody's gonna I mean because this is criminal behavior this is do you know how long they've had this and this is taking away days and days of time where people could actually have gotten a, a, a legit company could have gotten things up and running to a certain point. So now it's wasting point, wasting time at the expense of these poor people. And I mean, I don't know. Most, a lot of these people. And FEMA is even saying that this is a bogus con. I mean, so if you, now you a lot FEMA, of people I mean, that said it. FEMA, the Congress people. Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess the only people that thought it was okay was that electric company, you know. Right. And uh, I just, I think uh, it's really unfortunate. I, I really. Here's my question. Is anyone going to hold the no. Trump administration? I mean, listen, Katrina was the Achilles heel yeah. of oh, George W. Bush. Absolutely. And he, was, he will always be remembered for messing that up. Yep. But, I mean, are people willing to just co-sign that what's happening in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands are okay? I mean, you don't even yeah. really even see that being a headliner anymore. No. So people are just like... And people are still dying. Like, so whatever 75% of 3 million is, right. you know, or 3.5 million, so right? Like, those many United States citizens, citizens. are without electricity mm -hmm. and many, many children of those out without water and children yeah. are not going to school. Like, to me, the government should give vouchers to everyone who Absolutely. wants to leave Puerto Rico and resettle in the States, and that should be the first thing that should happen. But, you then, know? but then what happens to Puerto Rico? Well, you, want, you want them... I'm just saying temporary relocation is going to be necessary. I don't oh, see yeah. how you can live in Puerto Rico for a long period of time. Right I mean, now. think about it. It's yeah. not... It's not you know, yeah, three point exactly. five. I mean, that's, that's like yeah. half of New York, New York City. Yeah. I mean, you it, know, would half would we let half of New York City sit there without electricity, no. without water, without their no. kids going to school? No. But it's but New York City is not brown. <laughs> I mean, well, this is what so I'm saying. That's I'm saying, why. I, that's I think, why. I think, I think. I think the. I think, and you want to try and everything. You want to act like okay. We want to live in a bubble because we are in our bubble in D.C. and act like you know what? No. Maybe it's not this, but it is this. There is a difference because Texas has its stuff, you know, up and running. And I, it makes me so annoyed when I hear, I was listening to um, uh, one of the uh, pundits talking about how, well, there's an ocean between us and Puerto Rico. I mean, it, that it's not that big. It's not that big. Yes, there is an ocean, but there are boats. There is an ocean. There are planes. There is an ocean. There are ways to get the people of Puerto Rico, the assistance that they deserve. It's not, I mean, this is, this is their right to have these, these essentials and, and the U.S. Virgin Islands as well. But we're not, I mean, I don't know. Well, I, I guess the victory right now is that this whitefish energy scandal has been exposed and they've been asked to leave because you don't want to have this type of, I guess, shadiness happening. Um, but then the bad part about it is, they're gone and they got to find somebody else to try yeah. and get this. I'm like, I don't even, I mean, it's so not it's even like, so much. A, you know, because here's the thing. If they could have come in, I mean, it may have been shady, you know, but there's the other side of it that we know, unfortunately, people go to people they know to get yep. things done. Yep. And, you know, but it, they can't. The the sad part of the whole thing is, you know, we're back to square, square one. one. The yeah. folks still don't have electricity. Nope. You know, we, if they're going to have some kind of vetting process that's transparent, it also needs to be expedient because right. you don't have forever. But you have big companies. I mean, there are some really big companies that, that, that have a reputation that don't necessarily need to be vetted that can come in and actually do this. And so that's the thing. That's where you – it has – I mean, I'm sure now that's where it's going to go. But it could have gone there in the beginning because there's – I mean, the, the bigger the company, the less vet. <laughs> you know, it's – I don't know. We'll see. It's sad. Yeah, and I think, you know, again, we we have to 
understand that there's a grassroots effort that has to mm -hmm. continue to happen and you know because clearly there's just a very slow response from our government yeah. um and and now it just now sort of they're on to the next they're definitely are <laughs> they're on to, to the, next. the next so it's important for um us to keep waving the flag putting resources there talking about it that's why we wanted to go back and talk about it today i mean mm -hmm. you know the the hurricane happened you know earlier October. in the month right yeah. but if we don't if we don't October. keep talking about it nobody else will. if we don't keep saying right. well, what's happening what's you know well, what's going on how can we get involved right. what can we do because you're right if whitefish hadn't happened if this hadn't happened we probably puerto rico wouldn't be in the headlines so the so the I guess it's fortunate that they're in the headlines, however negative, but we got to, yeah. Like, and you got to go back on that site I had talked about a few shows ago yeah. that, you know, we talked about how FEMA took all yep. the information off, off their, their website. website. Yeah. And you'd have to go on that other site. I will post it up on the Facebook yeah. page, you know, where you can follow what's, what's actually happening, happening in Puerto in Rico. Real time, yeah. And it's, it's in Spanish because the American government doesn't <laughs> offer that level of detail or dashboard, but you right. can see it through the Puerto Rican government's on tracking mm -hmm. mechanism. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Hillary Clinton, I feel like it's in the news. There's your, I don't really, and maybe you have, I don't really understand. I mean, yes, I'm reading what's happening. So I'm understanding from the perspective of, oh, I'm, I'm reading, I'm getting what you're, what they're saying about her selling your uranium to Russians. But the fact that they now have a, a three I don't get that. Can you just explain that? Because I feel like there's just been a lot of, you know, well, you guys are investigating us for mm -hmm. Russia. So we, 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 we we're going to, I mean, even this morning, Donald Trump tweeted, yeah. you know, and he talked about, he, first of all, he, of course he makes up his own facts, but he said, right. I've never seen the Republicans so angry mm -hmm. and united right. over, um, pull, you know, tracing Hillary Clinton's, you right. know, doings, et cetera, et cetera. I'm like, I don't really see anger, anger and, 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 and unity, unification. Yeah. I mean, no one really cares except, except for you. But I mean, what is this whole thing? It's there, a lot it's a of distraction. Noise. Okay. Um, because it's a distraction because real charges and real indictments are about to happen. They're about to go down. So that's what this is. It's a, it's a dist I mean, because there's no real reason, even watching the, 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 the news and, and not just, um, I mean, because when you watch Fox, it's just a big bunch of hey, lock her up, but there's no real, evidence or understanding as to what was done i mean yes yeah, shady but governments mm -hmm. they're shady. i mean we, we this is what we talk about shady doing shading dealings of her selling 20 percent of her uranium this uranium to the russians um and so I, I am now i guess now we're we're forced to look up the um the the, the asset the uranium assets of the clinton foundation um and, and find out why several um, federal agencies are, are now trying to indict her for selling this uranium. I don't know. Um, what I do know is that she's not the president. What I do know is that if you're in a democracy, not a dictatorship, once you win the presidency, you do not go after the person that lost the presidency. That's what happens in dictatorships, and that's what it seems like is happening now. And more so because there are real, uh, <laughs> there's some real, uh, indictments that are actually going to happen for the Trump administration um, regarding his be their behavior. Um, but it, it, this seems like it, it's Trump going after Hillary Clinton because he needs the distraction um, because he doesn't realize that he's the president and he can just keep moving. Um, but I feel like <laughs> I feel like as this grows and as we know more and we educate ourselves, we can talk more in detail about it and. And understand, but maybe next week we'll have an impeachment. I don't know. Well, right, well, I, <laughs> and that, it'll go I think there's a little, <laughs> there's little hope of an impeachment. Little but, hope, but but I know. do think that you know, with the Russia investigation, Bob Mueller, mm. he, you know, he's they're coming he's forward, on the and they have uh, filed charges against at least one individual. They say at that least, it's sealed. They say that, yeah. Right? And, but, but so, so who's, who could it be? So it's, is it Michael <laughs> Flynn? Is it Manafort? Is it Kushner? Is it Donald Trump Jr.? Uh, All uh, of these people who are not, and they're saying it's a little fish, but these are the names that are oh, being they thrown are saying around. It's a little fish. I, but these well, are the names that are being thrown around. So I mean, they're that, trying to make it like these are, these are not little fish. These are big fish because two steps ahead of them. I mean, so then what is the, if this is a little fish, then we do have an impeachment coming down the pipe. 
Because then the other, then there's how many levels are there to Trump after you get to Jared Kushner? One. <laughs> I mean, let's or Don clear. Jr. Or Don Jr. So or any of these people. You know, these were people who were intri- intricately and intimately involved. Um, so it's it's supposed to be tomorrow, as soon as tomorrow, and I am sitting with my so, popcorn. Yeah, I mean, right. It is. It's good. Well, second to the cult. Second to the uh, Comey, the Comey uh, right. uh, testimony. Right. I think this will most certainly be the most. Oh well, you know one of the things we didn't talk about. I'm just going to switch for a second. That's We're going to talk about fanfare and pomp and circumstance mm-hmm. up on the Senate floor. You know, of course we have uh, uh, Flake. You know, who mm, talked this week, who did that whole big right. thing from Arizona. Right. And, right. And Corker. And Corker. Right. So you've got Flake <laughs> and Corker who both have come out, you know, against Donald Trump. Look at their voting records, though, folks. Yeah, well, they, <laughs> they're well, coming out against them, but they vote with them. 90, well, they're years. they're also not running for re-election. Right. And so, you know, Flake's speech was very interesting. Was. He talked about people stop, people should not be complicit. And, yeah. you know, I have I have two daughters and yeah. I have granddaughters. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. you had all those people before. And it was, right, and it was real. But it was real. But we, what, what he should have been saying this is um, a year ago. That's when these people should have been uh, on there. I mean, he was the same fool a year ago. Yeah, well, <laughs> these guys, I mean, I do think, I love it when anybody takes Without, the yeah, advantage yeah, of their yeah, public yeah. Um, opportunity and speaks out against Donald Trump because I think that should happen. It's unfortunate, though, when it's when when there are people that are not going to run again right. or really... Or still have the same views as he does. Because no. some of it is very, you know, grandstanding, yeah, yeah. but... You know what? But, what we could hope, although I don't know how. Where is Croker from? Do you know? Um, he is South uh, Mississippi, Texas, Tennessee. Well, because we Tennessee, know Flake is we, from Arizona, Arizona and Arizona is. is a very red state. And so, cause no, he's, I, he's red too. Um, Croker is red, and I'm gonna. We're, he's they're they're both very red. So well, it's not, okay. Well, while you find that, I mean, because one of the things that I heard people say was, well, maybe a Democrat will get these seats, which mm. I think, or I think that's or, a slim, slim to none, but, you know, that's a, that's a hope. The other thing is that they're saying, well, what if somebody gets the seat that's very anti-Trump, which Tennessee. is unlikely. Yeah. Okay, Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee. It's very, I mean, here's what, here's what I see happening, and it's kind of the Trump effects that they've been talking about. Mm-hmm. You're going to, if you're going to have a career in politics right now, and you're a Republican, unfortunately, many people are feeling that, you know, they have to line up with this guy mm-hmm. or just be silent because mm-hmm. he's such a bully and yeah. he can't take, you know, any type yeah. of discourse that's not, you know, total, I agree with you 100% of what you're and saying you all the time. Steve Bannon talking about their skin and heads. I mean, it's, it's a total nightmare. So they're being intimidated and bullied not only by Trump, but by this whole movement that Bannon has going. So you have to, you know, because Bannon then wants to drain the swamp. So then are we going to have a whole bunch of Bannon Republicans who are sh- coming out with their guns and, you know, talking about the reds and the oranges? Really? Yeah, I mean, so that that's what Homeboy did more in, in you know, Mississippi. He was talking about how, you know, all of us, the browns and the yellows and the oranges need to get together. This was in September. I mean, it's, so these are these are the type of people that see Bannon, are, it's putting his, you know, cart, you know, horse and cart in front of, and, and, and then we have, Donald Trump, who just wants people who are going to lick his, you know. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, he, he does. <laughs> he, <laughs> He's going to get really. But yeah, so, so it's just either way, we, nobody, we don't win. I mean, we, this is, it's a, it's a nightmare. And but, I think, and I think when the whole, when we find out on Monday mm-hmm. with bated breath, who's going to be charged, mm-hmm. you know, probably, I mean, we knew that they, this commission was going to have to put up someone. Absolutely. So, you know, whether it's Michael Flynn, Paul Manafort, I mean, it's not going to be Jared Kushner. It's no. not going to be Don no. Jr. It's just not. They're yeah. too No, close. they're throwing somebody they're in. Gonna, the right, they're going to throw somebody in. They're going to put all, they're going to scapegoat mm-hmm. that person. Mm-hmm. Behind closed doors, they'll mm-hmm. take care of that person. Right, right, right. And so that's, that's how, the, and then they're going to look to seal this up and throw it away and act like it was nothing. You know, that's probably what's going to happen. But I do think it is interesting that, there, I would say it's probably my naivete, but I didn't know there was this much meddling, period. Like when they're talking about all these Facebook oh, yeah. ads that oh, were put yeah. up with tons. just news that wasn't true. Mm-hmm. 
and you know you're you're looking at this stuff and you're on Facebook yeah. and how and how easily do you say oh my gosh like whatever it is yeah. you know and right. then to find that there's a large percentage of this stuff that's, that's just not... made up fake news yeah. you know so you I mean, have to really fact check and then like they you target have, you with these ads are. right so they're looking for so you know they'll look for um, African American this that or the yep. next and then they'll put up some white supremacist yep. blah blah blah, blah, blah. Yep. and then they'll look for white rural this or that yep. and they'll put up some immigration yep. immigrant predator type of, you know and so and all of it is and it gets really scary because you don't know what is propaganda and, and what, what is isn't it, yeah. and so then how does the voter who really wants to make an intelligent and, and informed decision you know, well, I want I would. News, well, don't this get your news, say, from don't get your news from Facebook. Yeah, I guess that's the first thing I would start with. Don't get your news don't from get Facebook your news because from Facebook. Facebook's but news is not real. And that, and that seems so to, sad. But to forward stuff that you got that you thought was real, I've, I've been a victim of it early in my. I mean, I've saw, seen something that I thought was, oh my God, this is so horrible. So, and it was news that I thought, and I put it on, and a girlfriend of mine was like, oh, I don't think that was right. I fact checked it before. And so that's where I got it from. It's like, you must fact check anything and everything you have to double check it because a you want to you want to be credible and you want to be in a in a time of you know people where people are not credible and people are dishonest and people are putting up this fake news you don't want to be an outlet for that you well, want to be as on point as you can yeah and i think um for me it got you know back in the day when you would get you know call this number and you'll get your free Microsoft computer or right, you, you know right, 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 you, right, right, right. you know jo click on this and right. you'll win a million dollars like that used to be my threshold for knowing something was BS you know but now it's harder it, it's it's much harder to to particularly with the Discern, way people right. and and the how fast we move and how we share information yep, yep. so I think that for there have been some people that have said. More than anything, we need to understand how there's interference in our election mm -hmm. process and mm -hmm. do our best to well, counter that. And, and that, that should be a screaming call for all of I mean, the fact that there that we know that there was interference in our election. And do you know why it's not as being addressed? Because they won. Because Donald Trump, and he probably had something to do with the interference, mm -hmm. in my opinion. But mm -hmm. this is a bit, I mean, to, for us to be manipulated, I mean, this is, we this is a terrorist attack well they, I mean, apparently they, they, they're the part of the discourse has been the fact that it's always been some other entity right. being involved i mean i you know and this takes you all the way back to the whole conspiracy theorist um and i kind of try not to live in that lane too much you know the stuff oh, with jfk yeah, came yeah, out this week yeah, we you did, saw right, that right, right, right. and i was just listening to them saying that back in i guess the 70s or like there was a movie that came out around mm -hmm. the 70s and like 80 percent of america at that time believed that there was some more information uh -huh. to jfk assassination so of there's course. been this conversation of, and conspiracy theories forever forever yeah. right so Always. um but i i think that we do need to this this is why everyone has to be in charge of their own thinking and voting process mm -hmm. you cannot pass off your responsibility right, to, to who your else. brother mother sister friend thinks right. should win you've got to be an active participant yeah. in your own political process yeah, which absolutely. means to be informed and converse with people and challenge things mm -hmm. that you hear mm -hmm. you know because i think that's also a big part of the problem that people are, they're very, you know, they're they're not tuned in until the very end. Yep. And then it's like whatever name I heard the most or whatever, people are going to vote for. So, yeah. Um, well, I wanted to talk a little bit about the GOP tax plan. Where the middle class is going to win. Right. Well, <laughs> middle class is going to get a cut I up. mean, this, 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 that's an interesting point because <laughs> this week something else that happened and I'm not going to have all my nouns and adjectives proper, right. but I'm going to give you the shorthand version. And the shorthand <laughs> version is that there was a, a law that w that Obama put up mm -hmm. to make sure that banks who oh, engaged yeah. in predatory Free. lending yes. practices yep. um, could be sued Suit. through class action, action suits, suits. Yep. right? And so the Trump administration, I believe yeah. through executive order, order. but I, yes. could, I could check my facts, but... They basically oh, um, struck that down, yep. reversed it, yep. therefore making yep. it harder for consumers to sue Brinkley. banks yeah. 
you know, in a class a action suit, suit, which is a group of folks, a group get, of getting folks together. together. And, and therefore, you know, basically if the bank gives you a raw deal and you figure it out yep. and, and it, they didn't just give you a raw deal, but they, they gave several a hundred yeah. of your closest friends or Run. a thousand of your closest friends a, raw deal, a right? raw deal, you no longer have the ability as a class, as, as a group of people to come together and do a class action lawsuit. Right. And, you know, it's unfortunate that, first of all, let me just say that to me, you can see it. the stock market, I believe, went up that day. Yeah. You can, you saw some of the, the uh, banks and, and Wall Street, they were applauding. There was yes, a lot of, of joy in corporate America. And it makes a lot of sense. It means we can do you dirty yep. and you can only come and you have to utilize our arbitrators our, right. and our mediators because that's basically what, what the banks do. And when you're, when you're going to the bank... And you're requesting that loan. And see, this goes back to the have and the have, have not. Because mm -hmm. if you have, you don't have to request the loan. Right. And you don't have to sign away your rights to justice if they give you a crappy mm. deal. If you have. But if you have not, you have to borrow somebody else's money. Absolutely. And they say to you... If the way I give you this money is dirty, dirty. Yep. you got to sit down with my people and my people will let you know what we'll do to solve it. And you can't get your own people because you're using my money. Right. You have not. Right. And I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's what happened earlier this week. Yet and still, the average American who is a large percentage of Trump's base who would be positively impacted Worth by a class action la lawsuit. Right. If they had to. Because, well, you know. Yeah. They will. They are now not going to be able to be a part of any type of process that seeks mm -hmm. justice. And we. And I also want to say that this came up. And again, I, I need to check some of my facts. But this was an about This regulation was put in place by the Obama, Obama administration, administration and I believe it had to do with the foreclosure crisis yeah. and all of those things. You know, where everybody was losing yeah. their house. Yes. And so they they basically saw the that the banks lending. were dirty. Yep. The predatory And lending. then, you know, Bank of America and all these other big banks got mm -hmm. zapped. Yep. And then now, though, we want to be able to go back to the way things were. When we got rich, y'all lost your house, yeah. and everybody was okay. Yep. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I think that this is important. It is. Because, remember, this is a man or a, or, or a party that says, no, we're not about the 1%. We're about the middle class. <laughs> and so then we're going to fast forward to. So that was like this week. That was this week. And I don't know if anybody caught that. But to me, I was like, you got to be too. kidding me. You have to be yeah. kidding me. And so now we're going to talk about the tax plan, right? And so the one part yeah, that I, I did I get. That was on Belgian rule when the, I saw it. What'd you the, say? The, the, with, the, with the predatory, the, um, the, the class action suit not being a viable option. Uh, it was on a uh, Velshian rule and she was talking about it and she was just going and she was saying, I mean, cause she, they, they usually do the money. They're, they're the, they're the money folks on um, MSNBC. And she was just saying how, how much of uh, a disservice it's going to be to the, to the small guy, it, to us. It totally <laughs> <Yeah>. is. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you when I get my, you know, hundred dollar class action lawsuit right. check from time to time, right. I get those little postcards right. that say, I always sign my name right. because you know, I'm going to get $45 exactly. for a hundred dollars exactly. and one of my friends got $500 right. and I, I need that. Right. You're it's not important. gonna be able to just do and be dirty. The money, and the auto industry, exactly. the medical industry, right. but the banking industry gets a pass. Gets a really? Pass. Well, Steve yeah. Muchin, Muchin, however you pronounce it. I mean, it's really not that surprising no. considering he represents the, the banks. banks. <laughs> it's not really a conflict of interest, or is it? Or is it you know, okay, so way. anyway, back to the tax plan. So I want to talk about that. 401k right? because, and tax right. plan. Well, the mm. thing about the tax plan is there's a lot of secretive elements. Even the Republicans are saying they don't understand, right. they don't know. But one thing that is clear is that the corporate tax rate is going to be decreased the, yep. from, a, I think, 30, 35% to about 20%. 20, yeah. And so we know that this, to me, is trickle-down economics, which they live and die by, right. uh, the Republicans. But they won't say now, that. Some people will say and you know that America has the highest corporate tax rate and it creates an anti-competitive global... Um, I think that was also debunked this week, that that's not the case. That America does not have the highest. There are several other, at least a few other uh, countries that have higher higher rates. Well, diabetes, we, 
the bump. Well, we know that the corporate tax rate coming down really does nothing for the average no. American. So they're, they're not because the money's not going to go to the employees. No, so <laughs> that you, they're saving. No, they're not. You know, and this whole notion of we're yeah they're going to give bigger bonuses to their shareholders and things that. that they've constantly done. So here's the other thing though that they've been talking about with the tax plan, and this is a a, a middle income person's. It's relevant to a middle income person. And so one of the things that they're, they're talking about doing is, and it's kind of a bait and switch in a way, because mm -hmm. the 401k is the retirement vehicle mm -hmm. that most Americans utilize. Yep. Sometimes it's matched by your employer, sometimes it's not. It allows you to take from your paycheck pre-tax a certain amount yep. that goes towards retirement planning. And then, you know, when you get it out, you know, preferably when you retire, yeah, when you, retire you know, yeah. you're going to pay taxes then. Um, this allows a lot of people to take money out their check and act and what happens is, you know, as a person that has used it for a long, long time, you know, you, you don't feel it as much yeah. and it does kind of help lower your tax liability in your paycheck, mm. which is, which is important. And also it comes out automatically, which takes yeah. the thinking and the, the, maybe the I'm work not going to do it this right. week. Right. You don't, it, yeah. you but know. it's the number one way. This is very important. It's the number one way that, that, uh, that. Americans save money. It's the number one way. A lot there are there is I think I don't know the percentage, but a, the large percentage of Americans that have no other savings except for their four hundred one k. Yeah. So this is humongous. Well, they say forty five percent of Americans don't have, don't have any retirement right. savings at all, and I know that. So when you do, so when you think of this as being the largest way that we save our money, the average American, the person. average American person. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, and this is. So it's this, humongous. so this is what they're so saying. What they so, so here's the bait and switch. So the bait is, oh, we're going to allow you to increase the amount of money that you put into your retirement savings. Right now, they would be moving it up to eighteen thousand five hundred dollars, um, and six, and if you're over fifty, so someone who's under fifty can mm -hmm. do up to eighteen thousand five hundred uh, yep. without having to pay um tax Taxes, free excuse yep. me to, to put tax free in terms of when you put it when in, you put it in. And yep. you, right and then a person who's over 50 could do even more than that so part of the the plan the part of it that they're set that they're selling to people is oh well we're going to up the amount that you can put in mm -hmm. right which is twenty thousand is what they're suggesting to you know that they're going to up the amount to but the the switch so that's the bait oh you guys can put more in mm -hmm. your 401k mm -hmm. right but the switch is all of that money that you could put in the eighteen thousand five hundred, you can put that in without paying taxes. Without you can take put that in right off, you know, out of your paycheck, mm -hmm. right? And so what they're saying is they're going to bring that down from eighteen thousand five hundred to twenty four hundred. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot, right? So if so, <laughs> so for people who, I'm, uh, I, again, I'm not sure, you know, people do different things with their money. So you already have an after tax option right. right now. You have the Roth IRA. You can do a Roth IRA right now. You really don't need the government to help, help you, you get there because yeah. you already have that. And most people, once you go over the 18,500, then you may move to the Roth IRA anyway. You know, so, or if you have a strategy where you're going to do some on your 401k, which is going to be before tax. And a lot of people are going to do that, you know, through their employment income. And then if you have additional income that doesn't come through your employment income, then, you know, after tax income, mm -hmm. then you may do your Roth. And here's the thing, you know, it's, it's really goes to become, I believe, a disadvantage for people that are looking for one, to take the money off of their mm -hmm. paycheck, mm -hmm. to reduce their take, their pay, their liability in terms of their take home pay Two, you know, I know for a fact that, there's a lot of things that wind up uh, getting in your way after you've bought your, te your check home for you to then write another, another check. check out because yeah. you've oh, got God. all the other competing bills. <laughs> yeah. And so there, there's a there's a bit of debate. Because right, if you don't see it, you don't have it, right? If that's it did, what, that's, never, what, that's, that's what I think. It, it never was mine. That's so, what I think. So just take it. And there's a bit of debate, right? There's a bit of debate. And see, Trump himself, and this goes back to just the wishy-washiness of it all. You know, he's... And for the, for the tr Trump disciples, mm -hmm. right? You have to understand that he has his disciples, oh, and his God. disciples will just listen. They will not look at the universe. They'll just mm -hmm. listen to this man. So the universe is saying, we've got to pay for these tax cuts, because that's <laughs> what this is all about. How do we pay? So I have to put it all into context. So the reason why they want to get your tax money now, they mm -hmm. want to take away 18500 tax-free now, even though you'll pay later, 
for they want to get all those taxes now is because they have to pay for the, the tax, tax cuts right, yeah. that they're giving to the corporation. Yeah. So if they're bringing down their liability from 35% to 20, 20 that's 15% right. that? right. reduction in money. So who's going to pay for that money right now? You are. You're going to pay for it by not having the tax relief now in your 401k. So this is the bait and switch. This is uh -huh. this is basically, but the Trump disciples, so while his people, you know, the grown-ups in the room, mm -hmm. while they're writing the policy <laughs> and they're actually saying we have to fund this some sort of right, way, right, right. here's option A, B, and C, he's tweeting to his disciples, no changes, I no won't change. touch right, anything. Right, right. So the, And then his people are getting pissed off because they're like, it's not helpful for him to say that. Right. But guess what? You know, his disciples... Oh, you they know, yeah. I mean, you know, so here's, you have but to But hopefully stay. his disciple, they're, they aren't making the decisions. So hopefully oh. when the decision makers are making the decisions, they'll, they'll tank this just like they did the healthcare plan. And because people, their constituencies are not going to blame Trump. They're going to blame them. Yeah, well, <laughs> so. well, the tax plan is going to pass. So I think the question, because there's mm. a lot of um, enthusiasm, I guess, in Congress, in, in, in I guess in our country, I mean, look, they want a tax plan. But I, I want to say paying all your paying a lot of your money in taxes sucks. I mean, mm -hmm. there's no one that's going to yeah. say that it feels good when you have to give a right. lot of money away to the government. Yet, still, if you're going to be giving breaks out to people, give breaks out to me. Right. <laughs> you know, not to the 1% or right. to these billion dollar companies or don't make it easier for the bank to screw me. Right. And then on top of that, give them a 15% bonus well. through a dec decrease in taxes. So I think that for people who are listening, You've got to stay informed, and you need to talk to your congressman because they're going to pass a tax plan. Right. The question is, is, what is, is the 401k like? right. and you going from 18500 right. tax-free to 2500 what what will happen? You what need, is that we, need, like? we need to tell um, folks that that's unacceptable. Unacceptable. The average person would like to continue to put their money in pre-tax and then still have the option to utilize the Roth like we had like anyway. We, been, right. we had it anyway. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah that was... You're not, nothing, you're not giving me anything. You're not giving me anything. Well, we can segue into somebody else who, who didn't give us anything. Um, <laughs> in an NFL owners meeting, it has come out that Bob McNair, the owner of the Texans, the Houston Texans, made the comment, uh, we can't have the inmates running the prison." Interesting. So racist. It's just dumb and right. I mean, and so he, he's of course then had to apologize with the standard apology of "I'm sorry," and if I <laughs> if I've offended anybody, well, yes, you offended anybody. You offended everybody. <laughs> what I'm also annoyed with is that not what owner in that room said, "Hey, yo, Bob, none of them. This may not be appropriate. None of them. Why would we refer? This is in this climate. Is this how you're gonna roll? Come on, Bob, think twice about this." I'm sure not one person, said, which now goes to even more reason why I am boycotting the NFL. I don't want to boycott. I want a reason to turn on my football. But now it's becoming a lot easier not to. Thank God for the World Series. Hashtag, you know, want them to win. But even still, even with that, there was controversy because there was a baseball player that made a racist comment, um, did a racist a I gesture um, for an Asian and then had a, tweeted it out with a racist comment about Asians. And so he's going to get suspended. He's made, again, he made his apology. Um, I apologize if I offended anybody. Yes, all Asians were offended by that. But he misses five games next season because he plays for the Houston Astros. So he, they will not suspend him this season because it's World Series and they're in it. So it's just insensitivity, insensitivity all around, right? And we have to be culturally competent. We have to make an effort to be nicer and kinder to you and, and to be actively anti-racist. I mean, and to have to say that in 2017, which I guess we have to say that in 2017, is that we have to be actively anti-racist. And we can't let these NFL owners feel like they can 
you know, take advantage. And they have. I mean, and, and I feel like it's our responsibilities. You have these players who, yeah, were like, why don't they leave? Why don't they boycott? They're taking care of entire communities, which are their families. This is their come up. They don't have any long money. This is short money. So it's our responsibility as the consumer to put the message to these owners that we're not going to allow you to talk about our, our people like this. We're not going to let you do that. And until we do that, nothing's going to change. But we have to do that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that if, if nothing else, this whole thing with the kneeling, with the mm. I'm going to suspend anyone who who, uh. who doesn't salute. Now the the conversation about inmates, mm -hmm. it has exposed the racism and to me mm -hmm. the the designation of players as property. Oh my goodness, one million percent. Because we just kind of talked about last week how inmates make money for yeah. the prison system they're you know I, I just feel like i definitely understand anyone who wants a career in professional sports it's, it, it appears to be a wonderfully lucrative career and it, i'm sure it right. does amazing things and for it gives you an opera it does in the community and the community you know. but if you do it but right. there is you know just like every job there is a trade-off mm -hmm. in for that experience and so I think for players who I hope there are players out there and families of players that really help them think through the choices mm -hmm. they make in terms of, for instance, what team they're going to play for. Yeah. And if one team is offering 24 million, but they think of you as an inmate right. and another team is offering you 20 million. Right. But, you know, if you choose to sit or stand, you know, they're good either way. Right. Go pick, there. You know, take that L <laughs> right. on a 4 million right. and, and, and put it into your self-respect yeah. and dignity. Yeah. Because this, we have been liberated the Emancipation Proclamation. No, right, 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 right. And, and, you know, we can't put them chains back on ourselves. It's hard. Though. And, I, and I think when you have blatant disrespect, blatant. Call, calling me a criminal, a criminal. you this know, is, but this but is insinuating that I'm in shackles and in handcuffs. Well, now yeah, but I'm not. But then, yeah. And then I'm going to accept your bullshit apology? Yeah. No. no. Not, and that's what I'm you want. And that's what they want. That's what they... And this is it's so it is so the plantation, you know, the 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 um, so. the, the 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 what it plantation, uh, what is it, the slave owner? It's it's that mentality. Well, that's, that's what, exactly, this is what we're that's doing. what it is. And they, I think, they, all the black players to boycott from that man's team. They you know, should. just become a free agent free or whatever agent. you have to do wow. to get in another team. But do they it don't now. Care about now. They don't care. Um, they care about their bottom line because if they dig, a, we wouldn't. Uh, the the ability of the player to stand or kneel should not even be in question. Uh, Colin Kaepernick not being on a team should not even be an issue. Um, so they're just, you know, the plantation sees the bad slave who's acting out, and so they're trying to kunta kente him and cut off that foot. And um, again, I'm going to put it back on us as the consumers who have the bigger voice, because if we boycott, they'll let them sit, stand, do whatever the, what they want to do if we take away from their money. Um, so we have to be very deliberate in how we're going to stand up for, for, for the people who can't necessarily stand up or kneel for themselves. Well, apparently the, the Texan players plan to do some type of protest. So I, I hope so. I think it'd be interesting I hope to so. see. So apparently there's, uh, there was a report saying they're going to peel off the decal on their helmet. Oh, I, I mean, hope they do something. You know, I'm just, I don't that, even know what time they play today. Do you know what time? I'm, I'm totally disconnected. This is, I mean, it's huge. I have no idea. I oh, totally it says 4.05 Eastern oh, time. I've totally the disconnected. Texas will take on the Seahawks. Yeah, I totally disconnected my myself from the NFL, which is big because we are, like I said, we are a football family. But, you know, my son today was like, Mommy, what if the Ravens get in the Super Bowl? <laughs> Mommy, can we watch it then? And I was like... You know, real sacrifice comes when it hurts the most. When you are doing something, you know, I, if I'm giving you some shoes that I hate, that's a that's that's a good deal for me, right? If I'm saying, "Oh, girl, I hate these shoes; they're too tight for my feet," but if you, if I'm giving you my best pair of shoes, my favorite pair of shoes, that's when you're giving. That's when you know, oh, you know what? I did something because it doesn't. It takes away from me not not at all to give you those old shoes that I hate, but it does when I got my best heels on and you like, girl, those are cute shoes. And I was like, you know what? As my friend, I'm gonna give them to you. And so that's what I had to get him the the analogy. It, it's you know it's resistance when it's working and you feel it 
and you feel it. And you know, I want to watch that game, but I'm not going to do it. But um, I get I'm, the Ravens are not going to make the Super Bowl. They're not. Which is which is which, which, which is sorry. a good thing for all of us in our household. I'm sorry. <laughs> they're not going to make the Super Bowl, which is great. No, I'm they just teasing. Work. I have no idea. The Ravens might be great. I just no, thought I would just. Be they're not. Say no, they're not. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I I. I hope that they don't. <laughs> no, um, said, not this year. Not this year. Yeah, but this if year. they don't, if they do, we're not watching it. You know, we, we, we unless, again, unless some major things start Maybe to Maybe the shift. Ravens owner will come out like really progressive and liberal and, and you know, yeah, they're going to give you a mm, reason to like watch them. Yeah, maybe. All right, yeah. We'll see. Keep hope alive. We'll only watch them. Right. You know, <laughs> like, we, could, we could totally live with only watching them. Yeah. But yeah, so I don't know. So what is our act up? What am I, my, I guess we're on act up. My act up is going to be after the whole, I guess, revelation of 45% folks not saving, open a savings account. Start with, start with a, you know, they have some where you can just put in $5 and just put in, you know, $5 a month and just see how that gets you. But I feel like we have to take some responsibility, you know, for our wealth and our development and how that, and how that shakes out. Um, and for them taking away, trying to take away the 401k is horrible, and, and we definitely have to fight that. But we also have to be responsible in how what we're doing um, to make our own wealth. Right. Um, I think the act of, so I found the website. It's E-S-T-A-T-U-S dot P-R, which is E-Status.PR. Um, again, it's this dashboard that lets you know what's going on in Puerto Rico and how the restoration efforts are going. I really want to encourage everybody to take a look at that at least once a week so that you don't forget mm -hmm. how far off this country still is. It looks, it looks a lot better, I'll tell you that, than it did like two weeks ago. It looks like the water situation is getting much better. But the electricity situation, 29.7% of people without that, excuse me, 29.7% of people that have yeah, electricity. Yeah. So yeah. clean water is awesome. Going to get some gas at the gas station is lovely. Right. But if you don't have electricity... Lights. It is very, you know, it, you it, in, in a tropical island, right. it's very difficult to function. So in addition to keeping your eye on what's happening, you know, my ACT UP, I think, will be continuing to look for ways to support the mm -hmm. effort for people who are staying there yeah. um, to tr try to find a way, particularly as we're coming into the holidays, yeah. what are the ways that we can contribute and um, picking up a piece of that work myself. Right. So, um I guess that's it that's for this it. week. We'll you see know. you next week. Or here, you, you'll hear us next week. All right. Well, this is Sheila Clark. This is Sabria Williams. For Black Women Talk Politics. We hope you guys enjoyed it. And we will talk to you next time. Listen, like, and share this with your friends, colleagues, neighbors, and everybody you know. Everybody. All right. Take care.